I'm Janet Shines. I'm the CEO of the JS Group. We uh, work with channel companies both defining their partner programs as well as on their demand generation. So today, I know you're probably sitting here saying, wait, what are we talking about? So at a high level, we're going to talk about how you define your brand as a vendor or a partner in a digital age. And really, it's about making the leap into the new you. Because what I see happening so often is no matter where you are in the industry, you're boring people half to death with your brand. And so that's what we're going to talk about is how you leap into this new you and the lessons that I learned about defining a brand this year as I won the Channel Influencer of the Year in 2019 from this very publication. So the first lesson is around focus. How do you really focus? What do you do to get your brand out there? And when you really look at it, you can't be all things to all people. So the first thing is take a careful look at your social media profile, yours personally as a leader. About 84% of social media profiles require an extreme makeover. That means each and every one of you. If you're not talking about the value that you bring to the market, you are missing the mark. The second thing is to really personalize your brand. Corporate brands don't matter. Your brand should reflect the people or you, the person first, and the company or the job second. People who shout their company's info every day, who get that fabulous thing from their corporate marketing that says you should post this on Twitter and LinkedIn every day, they are boring and annoying the very people they're trying to attract. And so what I will tell you is only 10% of your social media posting should be about your job, work, or company, and the rest should be about what's important to you, what is your platform, what do you really stand for. The third lesson is I would tell you be a unicorn. Be the person that wears the bright red sneakers with their jacket instead of the uncomfortable high heels. By the way, there's a plus, they're really comfy. Um, be different in what you post online, not argumentative different, but different, have an opinion. Be an opinion. Be something that matters. Even if it's negative, it's better than having the, I'm going to like and share the same corporate drivel everybody else is. Because loud doesn't matter. Interesting does. So last year, my number one post on social media was I, I bought this t-shirt that said, clearly not everyone was kung fu fighting. And that was my number one most liked post. However, the two posts on each side, which were business posts, were number two and three. And so if you can stand out and you can be a little unique and you can be a little different, be a unicorn, you will get attention. So I want to spend a couple minutes and just design your brand. So what does it look like to actually have a brand? Someone asked me, how did you win Channel Influencer of the Year? I designed it. I worked on it. We have a young lady that works for us. I love you. I have a young lady that, work, that works for us, and, uh, and actually, as Amy's walking in, you have some too, that all look at how we're going to go after our brand. How are we going to get scientifically better? And so I love Rob Ray at Dato. I'm going to use him as my example. Rob and I uh, were two points apart on the Super Connector survey last year uh, that Forrester does. Rob traveled more than 190 nights for business. I traveled 38. And so the science of being a Super Connector has more to do with designing your brand and a little less to do with wearing yourself out. So the first thing I did was I thought, what are my passions? I love the concept of women being in technology, and I love go-to-market. I love branding. I love selling. I love how do we make a better channel. And I really thought then, that's nice, but there's probably 400,000 people on LinkedIn that have the same exact thing that I do. So what's my superpower? What am I better at than anyone else? And so what I think I'm better at is connecting. And so I started a not-for-profit called Tech World's Half. I put it on Facebook. I hoped I'd have 400 people. Uh, we have 5,000 members now and going strong, constantly inspiring people because I stepped back and I thought, what would I win an award for? So let's say that you're an SD-WAN vendor or you're a, a, a mobile over-the-top vendor. You have to think about your solution, your product. What are you better at? What would you win an award for? And you should try to stand up for that online, not all of the drivel. And the next thing you have to do is think about what are your values? So what do you as a person stand for? I stand very firmly for the fact for diversity, but I also am a total geek. So I love technology. I love the science of robotics and AI and all of those things. And what would I stand up for anytime? Innovation. Anytime I believe innovation will get way far and above somebody doing the same old thing. 
and what I noticed was if I thought about my pet peeves, things that really bothered me, that gave me a platform to stand on. So inequality, of course, bothered me, but so did people that were being lazy about their technology, not introducing new technology. And so I really started to defend those that were leaning in and leading out. And then finally, you have to define, if you're going to be a big brand on social media, you have to define your purpose. It's not a showdown. It's about driving your passion to win. So great example, uh, last year I got into a really fun dialogue online with one of my competitors. And um, we weren't arguing, we were debating, and we had hundreds of thousands of people getting involved in that dialogue. And I'll give you a really simple example. Yesterday, I was flying here. I went on Twitter because I got a cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee on JetBlue, and I was pretty happy. I'm like, wow, they're serving Dunkin' Donuts on JetBlue. This is awesome. So I just tweeted, you know, hey, at JetBlue, hey, at Dunkin'. JetBlue answered me back immediately. 1.7 million followers means that at this event, when you look up CP Evolutions hashtag, you're going to see me. Not because I got one of you to engage with me, but because scientifically I knew on my way here, if I talked about me as a human, right, which needed coffee really badly yesterday morning, one of the big brands will engage with you and it will lift and elevate you. And so many people forget these simple, basic things when they want to get a hit. In fact, if you want to be in the top 20 at any event, get a consumer brand to engage with you on your way there, uh, on your way back. The airlines are a great example because they only get complaints on social media. So if you put something positive on social media, their social media team will be all over it. Um, and it's true of anything. You can do this with Uber. You can do this with anything you use in your travels. They'll get back to you, and now you'll be at the next security event, RSA, or you know whatever event you want to be at. You'll be there, and you'll be top at the, at the Twitter or LinkedIn boards because you engage with a consumer brand. So it really comes about having that purpose of saying, I am going to be noted in the industry. People are going to know who I am. And then, of course, finally, when you're establishing your brand, you have to think about what's your differentiation. So I saw this study last year and it cracked me up. 70% of people thought they were above average. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but that's impossible. 70% of people cannot be above average, but they think they are. So you have to live in a world that says, that's my differentiation. What really is it? What makes me above average? What am I better at? And you have to, in social media, ignore everything else because the rest of it is, quite frankly, just noise. And so if you have your purpose, your value, your mission, and your differentiation, that's your brand. So way to go. Uh, goofy guys up here are with me. Now you have a brand. So what do you do with that brand in the 10 minutes I have left? I'm going to talk about how you now take that brand on the road. And by the way, it was really interesting. I was having a conversation with Ashlyn, uh, who runs our social media, and somebody uh, had shared something uh, with her an email, and she answered them back and said, I'm sorry, this isn't shareable, which means it's not real. Because if it's not shareable to the millennial generation, your content is not real. And it was not something that she would share with her rather sizable uh, social network. And so we sometimes don't think about that, and we think if we put something out there, and we've, show of hands real quick, how many people have posted something on LinkedIn and had no one comment? Isn't that the worst feeling? You're like, but this is so good. We wrote this whole article. It's really smart. It's about our technology. No one cares. And so the guiding principle that I've used for my brand, and my favorite guy, uh, Michael Scott here, so uh, he was once asked, would I rather be feared or loved? And he said, easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. And so that's been my, I have him on a big poster in my office. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. That is truly hard for us. I'm of a generation where we didn't think it was appropriate to share I'm sitting on the couch, and then two minutes later still sitting on the couch, and hang on, selfie. Um, you know, that wasn't really our thing. But what I've found is, when I started on this journey a couple years ago, we used to go to meetings and, and, and go to engagements to get information. The next generation uses social media to get information. And so if you're not there, they're not going to come to the meeting. They're not going to engage with you. And so quick old kind of quick five-step process here for you. One, you've got to update your profile. 
I've looked at a lot of attendees' profiles here. Super boring. No emoticons. No hashtags. Nothing that would let somebody search you out. So you got to try to find that. That's the first thing. You got to fix that profile. Go look at it. Look at four or five influencers' profiles and say, is this really any good? Second, you got to take the gloves off. You got to consider tempering your opinions, both personal and professional. I know everybody hates the political environment in our country right now, but if you want to be popular in social media in the industry, you cannot have that opinion anymore. You must kind of be Switzerland when it comes to things that are unpopular. And I know people like to debate online and complain about consumer brands and uh, rant about the latest thing that happened to them at the latest restaurant or sports game or political issue. You can't do it. This isn't debate team, right? This is popular team and you want to be popular. Next, you want to make an investment. Nothing is free. Being popular and having a good brand is going to cost you time, money, or both. I will tell you, I have outsourced mine from the beginning. There is no way I could write enough content to post a couple times a week on LinkedIn and then to post every day four or five times on Twitter. I don't have that kind of time. You can outsource this to a third party agency, to a Fiverr, uh, to as I did initially to somebody young, an intern, um, and you can outsource the majority of your content. Now you'll have to approve it, you'll have to review it, but you do have to have it. Fourth, you need to have a written plan, being specific. So I actually put down the thousand people I wanted to be connected with when I started and got all thousand of them. I'm now up over you know, 80 or 90,000 connections across my platforms, but I knew the people I needed to connect with. I had a plan. I had a plan for influencers. I had a plan for how many impressions. I had a plan for impact, and that scientific plan landed me where I wanted to be. And then finally, you want to socialize that plan. So you don't want your colleagues to be surprised that you're all of a sudden all over the place online. What's happening? Why are you talking about your personal passions online? Why are you talking about the company online? They need to know why you're doing that. And then for a bonus, you have to work the content. Plan your content carefully. I use a simple Excel spreadsheet that has my daily postings, the content. 70% of that is on my personal platform, which is Women in Tech. 30% is on my company and other technology issues. The hint here is you cannot wing it on content. If you're seeing someone posting great content while they're here at an event, they did not just do that on their smartphone in the hall. They actually planned it. So once you've done all that, you're ready to build audiences and networks. Now what's shocking to me is that 74% of the managers in our industry have fewer than 500 meaningful connections. Because by the way, if you have 1,000 connections and 750 of them work for your company, they are not meaningful connections. Congratulations, you used to have a phone directory, now you're on friends with each other on LinkedIn. Um, so audiences and this concept of networking matter. So a uh, study we just did, 48% of industry leaders can name at least two social media influencers in their field. And 37% of them were not connected with at least two social media influencers in their field. So think about this disparity. So buyers have changed. So 78% now of purchasing is done by a non-technical buyer in our arena. 73% of people in buying capacity are now considered millennials. And 81% of the time, they begin their data research online. And yet, we have all these people that aren't even connected with the influencers in their field. That's dangerous. That's where these shadow channels and new vendors are popping up and taking business from us. Because the bottom line is, it's not who you know. It's who knows you. That is the first rule here of being a popular brand in this industry, in this day and time. It's all about who knows you. And yet, fewer than 20% of the managers and above have a written connections plan. They don't know who they're going after. They don't have a content plan. They don't have a plan for who to go with. And by the way, that whole plan in totality would take about 30 minutes for me to write. So it's just sloppy that people are not connecting that way. And 
when you look at it, the people at the top of the hill, the top 10% or so of people in the industry, earn 20% more than connectors and 47% more than low connectors. They're getting business. They're getting business in droves. And yet, most of the companies I talk to don't have a connections plan. They might have a plan to be on Twitter or LinkedIn, but they don't have a plan. They have no plan. They get a business card in an event like this. They don't even connect with the person on social media. This is not something that any of us can afford to sit back and watch. This is our participation sport. And you have to really focus on how to grow your presence without it blowing up in your face. By the way, my favorite picture in the presentation. One, shouting about your business will mean that people tune you out. So if today, actionable, you are doing most of your posts on social media about your business or your industry, stop it. You would be better with less posts than you would be with more posts about your business. But the right presence, the right mix between your social brand that we talked about at the beginning of the Prezo and your business brand will deliver for your business and your brand in a really big way. Because it's all about that concept of trust and engagement. People want to know you, they want to get engaged with you, they want to be engaged with your brand, and when you do this consistently, they will trust you. So go ahead, be the rock star. Be the person that decides they're going to get out there consistently posting, consistently engaging, and staying true to their brand. In total, with somebody writing a little content for me, by the way, you can use Fiverr for that, I spend maybe 45 minutes a week on social media. It is not the investment people think it is to be out there and be branded and be aware and be acknowledged. I'm, I'm waving at people. So what do you have to do? You have to tweet three to four times a day and you have to do LinkedIn two to three times per week. Now, if you're in something very visual, you can add Instagram, Snapchat. It's great for your kids. I don't think it's good for business. But on minimum, you have to be willing to make this level of investment to appeal, quite frankly, to the next generation of businesses. And finally, as I wrap up, don't forget, you have to plan to have a brand. Update your brand design. Make a goal for your connections. Plan your content to have the maximum impact. Engage, 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 copy influencers, impress influencers, get with people, be consistent for six months, and bottom line, just really have some fun with it. So I'm gonna close this up by telling you very simply what has happened to me in the last two years since I've adopted this. One, I have my own business, I get all of my leads from my social connections. I do no marketing spend, expensive events, um, mailings, etc. cetera. Um, I won Channel Influencer of the Year, so that was awesome, and thank you to the Channel uh, Futures team for that. But most importantly, I have a handle on the industry because of listening in to a few key influencers that I never had before, and I can reach out to those people when I need introductions. And so I think it really comes down to doing the right thing. So if anybody would like to talk to me about it, I am here and I'm happy to do it, but I wanted to close up with something that I hope will make the point visually for me um, of why we have to do things differently. So this is gonna be harder on me than you. So right leg in the air. Those of you who have seen me do this before, don't tell the other kids, right hand in the air. Make a circle clockwise with your foot, and now make the number six with your hand. Did your foot go the other way? Because if not, raise your hand, because that means you're a freak. It's the law of opposing forces. Now, foot back up in the air again. We're going to do this circle again, but we're going to make the six from the belly. When you make the six from the belly, your leg continues to go the same way. Branding yourself as a vendor or a partner on social media is as simple as that. If you do it wrong and head in the wrong direction, you will not be able to go that way and you will go down the wrong path. But if you simply change your approach a little bit, like we did there in that second time, you'll make the number every time through your brand. On behalf of everybody at JS Group, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. And who do I have coming up? Hang tight for a second, Jan. I've got a question for you. OK. So what do you say to folks like me that are very private? I only social media business stuff. And I understand that you know, your, your approach is, hey, I'm going to be human, and I'm going to expose my life and insights 
you know, because that's what people are interested in. I'm not that person. So what do you say to somebody like me? So you have to pick a personal platform, something you're passionate about. You don't have to share. Listen, I had my dad's in the hospital, my this, my that. None of that is on my social media platform. So mine's about what are you passionate about personally? So it might be sports. It might be whatever you're in. What are you into personally? And I that's the only thing. I don't want to say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just pick something. <laughs> um, and, and then that's the only thing. You don't have to post about your family or your vacation or endless selfies of yourself with people. But you have to have something people can say, I feel like I know Eric as a person. So when I see him in an event, people run up to me all the time I've never met and hug me. Because they feel like they know you. And that's really what you're looking for. You want people to feel like they know and can trust you. So pick like a sport or something. Hockey's yeah. awesome. I've got a few things. Okay, perfect. Any other questions for Janet? Questions? Hang on, let me get you the mic. Try this. Hello. Oh, you can hear me. Hi. Okay. Uh, so when you think about branding, right, and uh, I agree with a lot of what you said up there, where does it fit within an organization, right? Is it everybody in your company that should be doing this, just leadership, your sales team? Who do you see really using this to help the company out, help build their own brand too? So any company whose CEO thinks they're above this is a company looking to go out of business. That's, what, that's my message. It has to be your senior leadership has to be getting engaged in this. Your salespeople should be too. Your marketing people should be too. But if you're a CEO or a leader of a company and you think you can leave this to the kids, um, I will tell you what Ashlyn tells me, which is if you don't want to get on social media, you're looking to be hashtag irrelevant. So that, that's going to be seeing. And they're all laughing because they agree with me. So I'm happy now. Okay. Any other questions? Questions for Janet? Thank you, Janet. Thank you.